Okay, this one's been requested by Dr. Peacock. Uh, he wants to know whether heavier things fall faster when you drop them. So if you've got two objects that are identical in shape and in size and in surface um, and you drop them uh, and the only difference between them is their mass or their weight, uh, will the heavier one fall faster? Um, obviously you could just do this as an experiment which you are more than welcome to do um, but we'll see what the theory has to say about it. Um, hopefully some of it's quite easy, some of it's not so easy. Uh, we'll start off with a couple of equations. The first one is an expression of Newton's second law which is F equals M A which can be rearranged to say A equals F over M. A uh, stands for the acceleration that's how much the object speeds up every second so um, if you increase your speed by one meter per second every second you'd have an acceleration of one so if I started off stationary and then started walking and after one second I was going at one meter per second then after two seconds I was going at two meters per second then after three seconds I was going at three meters per second so I was speeding up and speeding up my acceleration would be one that's what acceleration is how much your speed increases by every second uh, F is the resultant force, the overall force acting on an object so if there is more than one force acting on an object the resultant force is like the overall force so if there's 15 newtons acting that way and what does that look like about 5 newtons acting that way the resultant force, the overall force on this object is 10 newtons that way and m is the mass of the object otherwise known colloquially as its weight, uh, how much it weighs measured in kilograms. So this tells you the acceleration of an object. The greater the resultant force on an object, the faster it accelerates. However, the greater the mass of an object you're trying to accelerate, um, the, the less it accelerates. So it's harder to accelerate heavier objects. Uh, so that's that. Um, now if we're going to drop a ball, and let go of it, um, forces are going to act on it. Now if for the moment we ignore air resistance then the only force acting on the object once we let go of it is going to be its weight. If we ignore air resistance there's just going to be one force weight acting downwards. Now the weight of an object, the force of gravity on an object is given by the mass in kilograms times the gravitational field strength. What this says is the greater the mass of an object the heavier it will be, the greater the force of gravity on it but also the stronger gravity is, the, 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 the gravity where you are is uh, the greater the force of gravity will be. So if you go to the moon the strength of gravity is less than it is on the earth so an object will experience less of a force from gravity on the moon. Uh, so, we can combine these two equations together. Since F, the resultant force, the overall force on the object, is only W, because that's the only force acting on the object, we can substitute in our expression for W into this formula and say that A, therefore, equals mg, the weight, divided by m which equals g, gravitational field strength, a constant. So if there's no air resistance, then the acceleration of an object that you drop is a constant, g. Notice that the m's in this expression have cancelled out. So the mass of the object, it seems, is totally irrelevant if there is no air. And that's indeed what experiment shows us. So um, if you go to the moon where there's no air and you drop different objects with different masses, uh, they all accelerate at the same rate and they all hit the floor at the same rate. Now I'll just show you a quick iterative spreadsheet model that I've got here because we're going to use it in a minute, but we'll use it now um, just to, to really get a feel for what's going on. So I'm just going to get this split screen. So what we're saying is that 
the acceleration equals g if there is no air. And on Earth, g is 10, so we're saying the acceleration equals 10. That means every second the speed goes up by 10. Okay. Then it's going to be really easy for us to fill out this table. This table shows uh, speed of two different objects of different masses at different times. All we've got to do is just every second of time that elapses, we just add 10 to the speed. So when the object is initially released, both of these objects released at the same time, their instantaneous speed when they're just released is zero. One second later, one second later, they're both going to be going at a speed of 10. Another second later, they're both going to be going at a speed of 20. Another second later, you can see what's going to happen. Okay, We can get Excel to drag this out for us. Oops. And over the course of 10 seconds, they're just going to speed up and speed up and speed up and speed up. There's no difference between the two. The, the, the lines for these two graphs are completely on top of each other. So if there's no air, objects of different masses uh, accelerate at the same rate. They fall at the same rate. No difference between them whatsoever. But we don't live on the moon. We live on Earth. And on the Earth, there's air. And when there's air, and you're trying to move through it, there's a force of air resistance, drag, <coughs> excuse me, acting uh, in the opposite direction to the way you're moving. So if you're running this way through the air, or driving that way through the air, or flying that way through the air, whoops, let's draw that horizontally, there's going to be a drag force, an air resistance force acting against you. And the faster you move, the more drag you experience. Um, now the formula for drag is a bit long-winded, okay? It is a half rho cd a v squared, which we're going to chop a lot of that out of in a minute. Rho, this Greek letter here, represents the density of air, um, so the different densities uh, of, of the gas you're in would affect it. Cd is a coefficient of drag, which depends on the shape of the object. A has got something to do with the area of the object, and V is how fast you're going. So the faster you're going, the more drag you experience. Now for our object today, I'm going to, because we're, we're considering two objects of the same shape, the same size, and they're going through the same gas, I'm going to lump all this together into a typical number uh, of 0 0.0, 0 oops, sorry, 0 0.01 v squared, or, or maybe we'll write that as a fraction, as v squared over 100. That's typical for, for you know a small object like a ball. Um, probably 0 0.01 is good enough. So that tells you um, the amount of air resistance that an object's going to experience, and that depends on v, how fast it's going. Okay. Now how do we factor this in? Well, now when we drop our object, after we drop it, it's going to have weight acting on it, okay, which is the mass times the gravitational field strength, mg. But it's also going to have drag acting on it as well, which depends on the speed, how fast it's going. The faster it's going, the more drag it experiences. Now, this has a crucial impact on our formula, okay, and a crucial impact on the outcome. Now the resultant force is going to be the difference between these two forces. So the resultant force on the object is going to be mg minus v squared on 100, okay? because the drag is acting in the opposite direction. Now the acceleration is force divided by a mass, so that's going to be mg minus v squared on 100 all divided by mass. If we simplify that, it's going to be g minus v squared on 100m. And if we remember that we're on Earth and g is 10, then finally a equals 10 minus 
b squared on a hundred m. Now this is different because now in our expression for acceleration we've got a mass term. There was no mass term before. Before acceleration was just 10. Now a mass term has uh, appeared in our uh, equation. So what this means is every second speed increases by 10 minus v squared on 100 m. This is a totally different expression. Okay, So every second the speed increases by that. Let's try an iterative process again to see how, how this now changes things. So now if we go to a new sheet with air okay, and I just get this up here to remind us okay so every second the speed increases by this new expression for acceleration 10 minus v squared on 100 m okay what are we going to do well we're going to do this iteratively so firstly this one's got mass 1 for this column this one's got mass 2 that's what we're going to substitute into this m here okay so <coughs> Here we're going to have this one equals, one second later, it's going to be the previous speed plus 10 minus the velocity squared, or sorry, the speed squared divided by 100m. Well, the speed was 0, and, and 0 squared is uh, 0, so that's actually just going to be minus 0. So that gives us our speed after one second. Likewise here, I'll do equals that speed plus 10 minus, but this term here is, is 0 for this one, so minus 0, which equals that. At the moment, it looks like they're accelerating at the same rate, but don't, don't hold out too much hope for that lasting. Now, every second, the speed increases by this amount. So now, this one's going to be equals the previous one plus 10 minus now we've got a velocity, so we're getting some drag. The velocity, or speed, my apologies, squared divided by 100m. Now 100 times 1 is 100, so that is going to be our expression for our new speed. Now the next one, this one here, is going to be almost identical, except it's going to be plus 10 minus v squared. However, now 100m is 200, because the mass is 200. So now, you'll notice <coughs> that the, the, the object with mass 2 is going ever so slightly faster than the object of mass 1. Everything else about them is the same. Their size, their shape, their surface is the same. But because of air, this one's now falling faster. If I now drag this out with Excel and maximize this window, Okay, hopefully you'll see what's going to happen to these two objects. Okay, both the objects initially accelerate at almost the same rate; they're virtually indistinguishable. But the lighter object, as as they speed up, it becomes more and more apparent that the lighter object isn't accelerating as quickly. And then eventually, they both tend to reach um, a terminal velocity, a final speed. Um, so then they fall at a constant speed, and you'll see that the lighter one is falling at a much slower speed than the heavy one. So, do heavier objects fall faster? Um, well, in air, the answer is definitely yes. It's quite hard to distinguish. I mean, if we look at a time of, you know, of maybe one to one and a half seconds of falling, you know, the difference is very hard to notice, okay? Um, so if you were to do this, you can do this as, a, as an experiment in class. You can get a table, te um, sorry, a, well you can do it with table tennis, but it'd be obvious. Um, you can do it with a tennis ball. If you get two tennis balls and a syringe and a hypodermic needle, you can fill one tennis ball up with water using a syringe and leave the other tennis ball um, um, just normal. And then they have exactly the same shape, exactly the same size, exactly the same surface, everything is the same. And if you drop them uh, from a height of one or two meters, you can barely notice 
any difference at all in the acceleration because we're dealing with somewhere down here where the difference in acceleration is, is, is there, it's, it's present, but it's very small. However, if you were to go to the top of a building and drop these two tennis balls, one full of water and one not full of water, you would then, you know, you'd then start to see a marked difference in, in the rate that they fall. So, do heavier objects fall faster? Uh, yes, if there's air, and yes, if you give them long enough. If you drop them for a really short distance and a really small time, you're going to struggle to notice the difference. But even so, the, dis the difference is there, so heavier objects fall faster. Uh, and that is shown, hopefully, by this you know, basic Newtonian mechanics theory, but also, more importantly, in practice. Uh, so there you go. I hope that has made at least some sense.